inshallah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam From the video of fire uh, from the eyes, is that state reached when a person reaches the noon of Nar and Insan? From the station of the <clears throat> there was the a noon? I think there was a re recent video that was mm -hmm. so they're saying. Yeah, we, we, we described it's on, on the physiology of through the huruf that if you have only one noon and you're just a reflection, well you know how, how, how great can a reflection be? It's okay but you're just reflecting, reflecting. What they want is a person to be lit so that not only you're reflecting but you have a fire within your heart. There's one whom just reflects the reality of Prophet and then the much higher levels are the ones whom they carry that fire within their being. That Prophet has lit their entire heart and they are like suns upon this earth. When they reflect like a moon from their face is guidance. But not to be mistaken that you guide whom Allah wants guide. But when Allah wounds that sun can release an immense power from its eyes to burn everything. So that's what's important is the power of the sun and can't be imagined again. So in peaceful mode the sun reflects to the moon and that moon becomes a guidance, right? So how we understood that in dunya is that at night time you take the pleasant moonlight and you say, oh such a beautiful night. But don't underestimate the power of the sun thinking it's night time and moonlight because Allah send you into a desert and you see that sun actually will rip you to pieces with its heat and you're just exposed to infinite amount of heat. Then they even found that if they take these magnifying lights and put it against sunlight they can melt rock. So solid rock from sunlight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Light with a magnifier, it melts the rock. So it means the importance is to have the two noons. That's why to to complete the training to move towards the presence of Prophet not just to be a reflective rose where you just smell nice but that you meditated, you contemplated, you reach to the presence of Sultan and Nasira, Qul lana yusibana Qul, Qul lana yusibana, why? To the get the Qul. This qul only comes to Prophet Why? Because that's a Qur'an, qaf and through the lamb that can carry that qaf is only the lamb of Sayyidina Muhammad So means that these are then ashiqeen whom they are in that reality and to be dressed by that reality. So it's important that everyone meditate, contemplate and reach to the presence of Sultan and Nasir, inshaAllah.
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa In the process of cleaning the self, the hidden sickness of the character starts to come out and it is uncontrollable. Will that be part of cleansing or is it an energy attack? Yeah, those are the same. That a part of the cleansing is to see the bad come out. Right? The, the, the inner demons and the tar and the badness has to come out. So it's like a shower that you thought you were clean, all of a sudden you, you wipe yourself and the, the towel is all dirty. So that you understand and that we understand the, the, the core and all the difficulty and badness that lies within has to be burned out. So when the people are not meditating, not making tafakkur, what type of heat are you producing to cook the inside to bring bad out? Nothing. So it just hides dormant within the person. They pray, they do a little bit zikr, they come, they watch the zikrs, that's okay. But you have to create an inner heat. When you make the meditation and make the contemplation, what's happening? The light is coming in, the core is heating up with these Divinely lights, there's nowhere inside for shaitan to hide. That's why people don't do meditation, they don't like even the word meditation. Why? Better just to pretend like it's not there and the bad character is not there. But that inner demon, he doesn't go anywhere, he just hides, lets you eat your halal, lets you to pray. Because this one's a really powerful one with a sort of like a sunscreen. He has like sunscreen 70 and he inside hiding and he can tolerate a lot more than other demons. But the tafakkur and the contemplation is immensely powerful light in the core of person. Means they're meditating, they're bringing the light of the shaykh, the light of Prophet eventually moving and radiating within them. When it radiates within them, where is the shaitan going to hide? So he's constantly burned by that and says, don't do it, I don't even want you to sit for five seconds to do it, I don't want you to even feel like you should be doing it. Go eat a hamburger and they go out and do something again useless and worthless. So it has a tremendous force to, to burn inside with this power, to cleanse inside with this power so that the outside can be clean. But people say, no, 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 we don't need these things, these things don't even exist in Islam. So then they walk only cleaning outside. And you know what happened, these buildings they look so beautiful. That's why I said they're going to probably hang these contractors when they start to find out what these people did. You look, the buildings look brand new. But you know when you live in a corrupt nation and corrupt people, what happens? They pay the engineering department, they pay the, this person, don't look here, don't use that brick, don't put this metal, don't put this concrete, maybe not even the right concrete. And you, you think that when you fake things, you can fool Allah but until Allah shakes one time and say, you're not really made from what you thought you were. And that's the difficulty when people see these kind of horrific images, that how these things fell down, they're all new. And then you look at the older structures, they standing because they were built with, with people whom had character and sincerity and they knew that people would be living here and they built with stone and solid materials. They show now on these TikToks the bricks at some of their yards, they crumble with their fingers. You know, you think that you can cheat people and that it doesn't have a consequence. And this is very much important in spiritual practices that just tell everybody that it's okay on the outside, follow us, don't worry about anything. No, because you're outside pretending like you're one thing, that you're all great and uh, everything is fantastic but the inside is rotten. What, what benefit is, is something with the inside rotten and the outside that looks appealing? The tariqah is actually the opposite, no, 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 everybody sit and meditate, contemplate, fix your inside, fix your inside and the outside was at the last minute. Now you can focus on your outside.
But now everything is the reverse, everyone just want to come and, and put the external dress of perfection but no internal training. And even they want to come and say that this is ajeeb, this is weird, we don't even do this. But that's what it was for, now look at the, these buildings. Why did they all look new and crumble like somebody made it from paper? Entire surface of, of the outside of the building fell off, then crumbled down. How could that happen? Why, why, why were they building, you know, according to codes and engineering in which things would stay solid and, and, and not crumble like that? So that's, that's you know, that's a, a sign for believers that you, you have to work on the inside, your inside has to be strong, you have to train your people to build their inside, their good manners, good character. Otherwise Allah just crushes the outside and there's nothing inside to even protect you. The inside is the protection, outside is, is the manifestation. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the, with the practices inside, the goodness inside, the energy inside. And then the outer garment can be perfected at any time inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is our responsibility towards these events and the people who pass away during these calamities of end times? Responsibility? Nothing. Keep praying. Keep praying with your family, showing your family, look how things are happening and then pray that Allah protect us and, and guide us towards goodness and if things come and we have to go, we go. And if we're not going then Allah count us among the nation of Sayyidina Mahdi salam. So make that intention every day and every night, Ya Rabbi let us to be with Sayyidina Mahdi salam, not to go in, into a different direction on the wrong side. But definitely a learning that whatever happening is happening. They say the core of the earth is also now in a shift and again when that core flips then the entire calamity is upon this earth and at that time there's no more time for belief. Those events then are settled. But the, the shift of the core and the shift of, of the east and west has already happened spiritually. That Islam would rise from the west. Not the East, the Eastern understanding is, is in Maghrib, is already the sun set upon that region. <clears throat> the rising of the sun and the rising of is Islamic knowledges and Islamic realities that when it comes out people are like, what is this stuff, we never heard this stuff. Well these are the realities of Islam and now when are they going to know it is when they look at the disbeliever. Look at the technology they have if they're supposedly disbelievers, why you think they know something that you don't? They don't, it's that when nation has it, Prophet brought all of these realities but they choose not to focus on it which is a shame, which is, is, a, is a crime itself. That the reality of salah, the reality of wudu, these are all based on energy. Why is it that Allah wants you praying? Because you produce an energy and a shield that protects you against a negative attack. It's not the praying, well what Allah is going to do with the praying? Allah says, the praying doesn't reach me, it doesn't feed me, it doesn't empower me. It actually is a gift for you that when you pray you create a shield of energy for you so that you're not harmed by the devils that are on that earth and surrounding. It doesn't empower Allah if all the people on earth stop praying, Allah doesn't become less powerful. But He loves this creation and once they become possessed and you know disturbed and, and lose their humanity then Allah is, is ashamed of that creation. So praying is for us, paying and zakah is for us. All of these practices and usul were for us to build our energy against devils, against negative energies and, and bad choices and sins. So these are all God's rahmah and mercy for our survival on this abode. So like all the, like they throw you on an island of snakes and bears and every type of creature that want to eat you. And somebody pack a nice bag for you 
and you just thank them all the time but you don't realize that the bag that gave you was your survival. And it wasn't about having to thank them all the time for the sake of thanking them but you're thanking them because he gave you a bag for surviving on that island. Means that when they threw us upon this earth Allah gave to us a means in which to stay protected was pray. Not because he needed the acknowledgement but we needed to stay connected to the power source. So as soon as we pray we build a shield of energy because now we're understanding wireless connection. As soon as you make salah you tap into a wireless connection. You know who understood this was Tesla. He could power a light bulb 23 miles away from the conductor that was sending the frequency. Why don't they want this technology? One, because they can't charge for it. But two, it shows humanity a deep reality in themselves. That when you tap into a power greater than yourself that is uh, not in need of any food, any nourishment is a self-contained power source. And all you have to do is be conscious of that reality and be conscious of that source and ask for it. Do you understand now the wireless reality of our reality? He doesn't need the prayers, all this self-contained power. But you're the light bulb that doesn't know where you belong and who to connect to and who's going to illuminate you. So we're the light bulb. But we keep thinking we're doing him and the Divine a favor, so no. This is your wireless source of reality and gave us a consciousness to think about Allah, contact, communicate and ask to receive and as a result that force of energy comes freely to you. So you pray to stay connected because uh, Allah definitely doesn't need it. You pay to stay connected. To clean and to cleanse, zaki means to take away negativities and again bring good energy to you because that's the system in which Allah's energy fields operate. If you're, if you're loaded with negative energies you send something ten dollars because of the goodness of that action good positive energy is now flowing through you and flowing towards you. Now your light bulb is illuminating more. So you pray all day your light bulb is illuminating, you're giving all day your light bulb is illuminating, you do selfless acts your light bulb is illuminating as a result what happens? Your bulb is lit. It becomes so strong that Allah now pushes you move around. As you move around you illuminate areas. So the energy understanding is far easier to understand. Then you put in the sharia and the laws was how to keep that light bulb clean. So it was common sense. If you're going to illuminate yourself well then you wipe it down. What kind of light bulb is going to be of any benefit if it's dirty? Have you seen an old light bulb in a closet that gets so filthy it looks like it puts out grey light? You wipe it nice and clean and it's like a beautiful bright light. So everything was about energy. Whatever Prophet brought for us was then how to purify and how to conduct it and how to magnify it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Can awliya Allah look into lohe mahfuz? Yeah well those are on the other talks they've given that. Yeah. Is there somewhere where they, can, they can't, then you would be limiting Allah. That means that everything is written from the reality of Prophet Whomever Allah gives eyes to see, they look where Allah wants them to see. And all of that is within the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So what is Laul Mahfuz? What is the preserved tablet? 
It's Prophet <coughs> Everything is written on Muhammadun Rasulullah These are all, are all destinations within the same light. So everything is Muhammadun Rasulullah What is Baytul Mahmur? It's in Muhammadun Rasulullah Umul Kitab, it's the depth and the reality between Allah's programming language directly into the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So it means all of these are in the Muhammadan light and that which Prophet is, is dictating from Divinely Tongue then is a transcription of what is coming, the code for all universes. If Prophet wants them to look at it, to take their command or sends them from it, that becomes their isharat and the guidance of what they have to fulfill. So the command of Allah Atiullah to the command of Prophet and then Prophet will dispense exactly what Allah's command was and that becomes, ulul amri minkum. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Forgive me for my lack of adab. When we say Allahu Akbar, is the who Akbar? Since we don't understand the Akbar of Allah, without your support I am lost Ya Sayyidi. Mm. <laughs> the who is Akbar? <laughs> That's nice. Yes, inshaAllah. That whatever we understand of greatness, because Allah's who dresses the who of Sayyidina Muhammad. Qul huwa Allahu ahad means that in a deep ocean of reality in which the reality of Allah is giving a direction to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Whatever understanding of greatness one could ever imagine, Allah's who is Akbar because Allah's the source and Prophet is a reflection, is the creation. So the Allahu Akbar is that Allah's who and Allah's who-ness is akbar, beyond comprehension. InshaAllah. And important to operate with the soul, energize the soul, empower the soul so that the soul can bring out its reality. So that if that reality comes out and people can operate from the reality of their soul. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Regarding your talk the other day, why would any jinn, good or bad, be able to teach angels? Don't angels have no will? Have no will? What does that have to do with teaching? Yeah. The angel is a constant, so they have the knowledge in which has been programmed to them as a constant, they don't elevate. So you seek knowledge, why? Because it's a form of elevation. The one who knows nothing for us just to understand is at the bottom of the ladder. The one who seeks knowledge is, is scaling and ascending a ladder. Something constant is staying at the ring of the ladder. If you're constant at one, you're at one. If you're constant at two, you're at two. So the no will 
They have no free will so they are at a constant. Wherever Allah programmed them that's their uloom. This creation of jinn they have a will. They don't have… they have a will in which they are very free willed because of their gas… gasish nature, the fiery nature, their will is, is all over the place for us to understand. As a result of Azazil's ibadah and worshipness, he kept rising in his servanthood to Allah and as a result of him teaching his jinn nations, the angels took a listening. And the knowledges that he was giving as he's ascending and ascending and ascending and ascending, they're listening and understanding and acquiring. So they were allowed to listen to the knowledges and acquire the understanding of those knowledges. For the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad they have knowledges then from the heart of Prophet above paradise understandings and above the angelic realities and above the reality of Sayyidina Jibreel where he says, I cannot go to this point as I would be non-existent. So means then the Muhammadan haqqaiqs were the highest. So he thought he was achieving high knowledges and high realities as he was speaking to his nation and teaching and teaching. The angels were taking a listening but Allah wanted to expose what he knew best of his creation. Before they listened too much that that was the talk that we gave that not only the listening of knowledges but the character is important. So. Pure water in a tainted glass will kill you. You can't say, oh the water's pure, it's the glass that's dangerous. And that's why Prophet warned us in last days. You know the Dajjal nations that believe only in Allah and they'll take out Muhammadun Rasulullah Prophet warned, their, their qirat will impress you, their prayers will impress you. The Ramadan will impress you but when they recite it doesn't pass their throat. Means from here it stops at here. Just have nice vocal cords, it's not coming from their heart. So means their outer will be like amazing to people, oh recite so amazing, like this is amazing but inside is, is warped, is fasiq and fake. That's why then the importance for tariqahs is fix the inside because so many people fake on the outside. They have an image and a form but inside, inside the heart, the zikr, the love, the ishq for Prophet and that that ishq should have the same characteristics. They don't conspire and go into an area and insult another person and, and purposely avoid a person to make conspiracies. This is not Muhammadan haqqaiqs and these are not even Muhammadan khuluq and character. That the character of Prophet he went to his enemies and sat with them, ate with them, tried to bring tribes together, bring love and compassion to people. And this, this, these are the Muhammadan characteristics. But today it's just a, a fasiq and it's everything sort of fake happening now. But that's why the fix on the inside, cleanse the inside, perfect the inside, the khuluq and the character and teach people to have good character and good manners inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzatama yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen illa shafi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sahbihi kiram ولا مشايخينا في طريقة النشبة ذي طلالية قصة روح من طريقة قبط خليك شاء نشبة محمد عيسى البخاري سلطان أولي الشيخ عبد الله فايز داغستاني سلطان الشيخ محمد نازم عاد الحكاني مولا الشيخ الشام كباني الشيخ عدنان كباني الشيخ محمد عادل ماذا خالق الدخول جدواني سلام زمان سيد محمد النهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سيدنا باقي صديق سيدنا أمة سيدنا أثمان 
Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima Fiz alayhi salam, wa sayru sadatina wa sadaqeena al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.